Hello internet, this is Tim Clerks. I am on the planet to build a better planet and let's do something really cool. I would like to show you about a really neat simulation that we're going to be implementing. Uh, we are going to be kind of demonstrating how to create a small simulation uh, about <laughs> uh, three bodies interacting. This is a, a problem that astrophysics, astrophysicists have been playing with uh, for hundreds of years now. And we're going to be implementing a very simple uh, version of it uh, that I believe Euler uh, was kind of first interested in uh, analytically uh, back in, I think, the 17th century. And we're just going to do a bad job. <laughs> we're going to be encountering how to implement things like Floating point precision, uh, rendering a uh, an animation like this, and try to provide you with a context to implement and explore yourself. Now, I need to provide a really important acknowledgement, and that is that the code that I'm going to be showing you is not original. Uh, in fact, it comes from a wonderful so open source repository. You can find it. Uh, through my GitHub. So uh, GitHub Tim Clicks Tutorials. Inside there is uh, the, it would have just been uploaded, uh, the link to the original code. And uh, the original code comes from a, a small library itself, which is also on GitHub. Uh, that I will get to you very shortly. I just need to create a banner with some text on it. I'll add that one. And so the original code comes from uh, this, uh, <laughs> from a Christmas Carl's uh, repository three body. And uh, yeah, so uh, please introduce yourself in the chat. One of the nice things about being here in live for those of, who, of those of you who are here live, is that you get to interact with me, we get to ask questions and answer them. If you're watching the recording, uh, please hit subscribe or follow, whatever's easiest for you, and uh, find a way to discover future tutorials because that will be the easiest way to get notified. Um, it's absolutely wonderful to see uh, as many people as have, you know, it's wonderful to see as many people as has, <laughs> introduce themselves. Okay, let's start with some code. Uh, so this is actually the end result. Oh, no, no, it's not. I'm in the wrong directory, which is perfect because of course I made a mistake right at the start. Um, let's take a look at the um, kind of the end result. And just because this isn't to criticize the original author, but just to say this is some of the design decisions that we're going to be talking about and discussing and saying like, is there a better way to do this? Maybe, maybe not. And uh, because there are some decisions in here that I would choose differently. Uh, so we have a few constants we need. So we're simulating the gravitational forces on three bodies flying through space. And we're assuming some interesting properties like, it's a perfect vacuum that there are no other bodies in the universe. Uh, but so essentially we're already creating a lot of artificial problems in our, um, ah, so there's a really interesting question from Archie. Can we visualize the orbits when they get close to each other? It's often hard to keep up. There is, in fact, there is a really wonderful bot that produces better, um, I'm just going to share, I'll bring up the screen. Sorry to get distracted for all of those people that really wanted to focus on the code. Uh, this is actually where I want to get to. Uh, and where you have motion blur and really wonderful animations. Uh, and if the bodies collide, so if you have two planets actually uh, smashing into each other, the thing <laughs> has a, a, like like slow mo and like your like planet cam. Uh, it's really really neat. Uh, allow me to add that into the chat. Um, 
And I also have a side question, which is that how fast was the one billion yacht rose? So this was a reference back to a previous a previous uh, challenge um, or a tutorial that I did, and unfortunately I can't remember. <laughs> I uh, my 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 implementation wasn't competitive with the uh, with the ultimate one, um, and so if we're right to the end, the I think we had a we have a collision. Oh no! So this particular so the there are three sort of so the the three bodies problem have a there is a, a few side problems. One is will for any set of initial conditions, will the three planets uh stay together like will they form a periodic sequence in fact there's like a famous uh, there are quite a few famous periodic uh loops and one of them is a figure eight uh so this essentially is a stable you could think of it as an equilibrium of um of gravity there is another case where one of the um, planets just flies off into into infinity and just kind of just leaves the the other two to twirl and eventually the third one is uh, someone will collide um, and they'll explode so and the question is can you find some sequence which like can we so here's the collision cam i think that was originally asked for um, uh, is your way to keep the orbits moving so this is actually what we want to do the code for this bot is open source as well and i'll allow you to dig into it um, right we should get into we should get out onto our own code we're just starting out we're not going to do a lot of astrophysics here um, as i thought this was quite a cool way to go um, but here are some parts of rust that i think are worthwhile to discuss we have constants uh, and a couple of times, so essentially these are parameters for the uh, simulation. And I'll just remove that other banner as well. And the the number of steps are essentially is the number of frames in our animation. So for every time step, um, uh, frames per second in the resulting GIF or GIF file, depending on... Um, <laughs> if you want to cause violence and <laughs> if you want to irritate people and then we need to um, then we've got a, a body so some celestial object like a rock in space uh rocks uh the something flying around in space has a has a mass of velocity and a position the positions though uh, just to talk about the physics this is already a we're already diverging from reality very quickly because the, the position the coordinate we're only going to say exists on a two-dimensional plane uh, x and y which is highly unrealistic <laughs> so we're creating so we already see that the computer model is wrong um and the uh, and this is a, a time so a time step da -da 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 -da, uh, a time step is a representation of the the universe at a particular time uh and it has three entities in there and this is like an array syntax um and so now there's a bunch of code that we 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 create um this is where we end up so i'm going to take us through the process of building this code how do we feel about that uh hopefully we've got some positive some positivity in the comments and um uh there is a question like what about performance i'm explicitly trying to avoid the performance question although we will talk about performance or some trade-offs around memory allocation and so forth and different representations over time uh but right now uh, i think the important thing to do is like get something working <laughs> we can learn about optimal rust once we've figured out beginning rust i apologize for those people that really wanted to start with a um uh let's say really wanted to start with a so i'm in tutorials and 24 with code and like just get going so i'm going to make it so cargo new and we're going to call this um space i want to call it something fun so i'm just going to call it and let's say orbits 
which isn't particularly interesting. It would be fun to call it something more fun, but, um, and now if I'm in Visual Studio Code, I need to add a new folder to the workspace so that the uh, syntax highlighting will work. So that Rust Analyzer will actually be able to find my project. Um, Now this is actually a numeric, no, it's not in alphabetical order, which is why it was so hard to find, 2020. Streaming, I've done a lot of tutorials, wow. <laughs> uh, a billion rows, billion rows, three bodies, orbits, and that one. Okay, Phew, finally I got there. So now we have a little baby project called uh, hello world and let's start by creating uh, some structures and one will be a celestial body which has a weight actually let's call it mass and I'm going to use a 64-bit floating point number it has some position so some space on our two-dimensional plane and I'm just going to say that it has an x and y and it's going to be, have a different representation than uh, what the end result the resulting code is going to have and i'll talk about why shortly but essentially i'm creating a two-dimensional um i'm creating an anonymous type essentially and velocity uh so this is a, a two tuples of two lengths so we've got an x and a y um and we have a uh Let's open on the right. So now this is going to suddenly become very hard to read. The question mark of our representations. Uh, so we can actually get quite far here already. Oops. Maybe I will actually just use one. Uh, So the unit, so here's uh, meters. Oh, actually, we don't need to worry about the units and we want time step. Uh, I just saw that someone recommended the idea of like calling it space balls. That's a very, very, uh, that's a fun one actually. Uh, so time is an F64 as well. And uh, step, I, we could call it ID it's a unique identifier uh, but let's just um, so this is u32 uh, and then bodies if we wanted to be fun and we wanted to have like a like an n dimensional uh, so that is we can have an arbitrary number of um, of of bodies we could do so by with a vector but in this case we're actually going to uh say that we have a fixed size um so we're gonna have a some body this is a slot this is useful for us for it's actually very useful for the computer because it means that everything can be stored on the stack uh once rust knows that a data type has a fixed size then it knows how much space on the stack to allocate if we ask for a vector then that doesn't exist quite as easily and I'm immediately causing uh, like renaming issues. Uh, and so for every step, and the other thing is, uh, I, uh, here is the difference between me and the original author. I would like to create like a simulation struct, which is essentially the world, and then implement methods on that over time. Instead, um, the original author, Carl, has actually created initial positions um, for um, all of these. Uh, all of these. But I'm going to do something, I think, which is a little bit sneaky, uh, which is implement a... A new method. The new method in Rust does not have a uh, 
then it's not is not bound by a trait. That is, it's not bound by a. Uh, it's not something that the type system has sort of special knowledge about. It's actually a convention in the uh, in the community, which enables every new method for every type to kind of have a different shape. In our case, we require that uh, people provide all of the um, defaults themselves. Actually, we could set the initial velocity to zero and just say that they are stationary um, because that's what's happened over here. And in fact, we could say for right now, the thing that we don't care about, we'll just say that the mass of all of the bodies is going to be the same. So the only thing, the only parameter that we're allowing users to specify is the vol is the position. Oh, and I also need to return self. Sorry that it's so so hard to read um, while the text is being um, in, like increased in size. No. So there is a compiler warning. Rust is telling me, or in fact, it's Clippy, I think, telling me that I don't need to specify the, uh, I don't need to specify the field name if I have a, an argument that's exactly the same. So there we go, I can reduce this. And then the other warning is saying that new is never used. Associated function new is never used. So essentially you should delete it from your source code or maybe you should just use it. So we're gonna create three bodies. And so, so first it's gonna be a body and then new, and then I want to create its initial position uh, using some hard coded parameters. Now these parameters actually come from a, a paper that's in the archive. I don't have the link directly right now. And the arc, the the paper has found a couple hundred of stable orbits. So uh, the contribution that the paper makes is that they have found some new families of three body positions that will perpetually wrote like kind of it looks chaotic because it is it's kind of the origins of chaos theory is one of the interesting things about this problem it's very very difficult to solve analytically why is this angry with me expected one argument but i've got two is the yeah so there is a comment saying well we could actually adjust this um and we can use the and so we can parameterize the uh the position and velocity we could essentially update them uh using what is known as the builder pattern and again it is it's a very common pattern in rust so once you begin to create your own libraries or even interact with other libraries it will make more sense uh for right now we're going to do something that's arguably not good which is we're going to just directly update fields if we need to um, we haven't declared them as public so our own but our own code knows about them the private fields and we can just update them as is i'm sorry adrian that you're in a meeting when the, <laughs> when the stream started hopefully uh you're still having a lot of fun <laughs> It's wonderful to see everybody. So the question, Rust is quite angry at me because I'm providing two arguments and it looks like they're the right thing, except that position is actually a tuple. So it needs to, uh, I need to actually provide wrap my two uh, X and Y in uh, parentheses or brackets, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, so I've got two, I've got three bodies and then uh this one has a different coordinate is it negative five and zero zero oops i keep pushing the wrong thing i really hope that the the that carl that was the original author um <laughs> doesn't find this and think ah 
<laughs> stop criticizing my work because this is not intended as a criticism at all. Uh, this is just essentially me saying, well, you know, to my eyes, I think there's a couple of things that we could adjust. And um, and this one is actually at positive 0.5. So we've got these three objects floating around in space. Uh, and I need to give this one a third. And now we need to have, like add some gravity forces. Ah, okay, so here are some, there's no velocity. And then here are the steps in the simulation. What we're going to do is for the entire, this might sound a bit ridiculous, for the entire length of the simulation, we're going to create every single position. Uh, so this will take some amount of memory. <laughs> uh, but it's, kind of the easiest thing to do uh, right now uh, and so what we can do is use the vec macro, macro which takes as one form of its arguments a uh, an empty array or and an array with the initial steps uh, sorry with the initial things that you want to include uh, and then we also provide a type hint so you kind of have this weird thing where the in fact this is probably unnecessary so we probably could ask rust to infer the type of the vector itself given that we're going to be pushing things into it very quickly uh, but i also want to uh i also i'm just going to show you another not a trick but another sent uh, another form which is that we are creating, we want to, oh, I need to uh, add that. There is another constructor, which is with capacity. Now our simulation has a number of steps and uh, the original code uses a constant, but I'm going to, yeah, in fact, I can, I might as well do that as well. Um, I'm just going to put it here, const steps. And I'm going to say that it's 100,000 steps. And we'll just use an unsigned integer. And in fact, I might even use use size. Could you imagine how annoying it is to get all the like two thirds of the way through the simulation? Let's say this is actually a computationally very complex and then running out of RAM. The advantage of this form of construction is that the RAM is requested right away. And so you know whether or not your computer is going to be able to run the simulation as expected before it uh, actually does all the compute and the in so this is just a you know if you have if you want to pre, if you want to sort of pre-allocate um, this with capacity method is quite useful uh, it's going to prevent the problem of not having enough space later on it also has the advantage of being faster because there will always be sufficient capacity and therefore during the program's execution you won't have the requirement that you vector will need to reallocate as it grows okay so we need a, we've got another parameter that we need to increase oh sorry sorry define which is uh, the time step and this is a floating 64 and we're going to say it's like 0 0.01 of some arbitrary length we're not using essentially anything that is scientifically accurate at this stage we're not trying to go for realism we're trying to kind of create a pretty animation and um, the okay, so let's let's um, let's let's run our simulated code for every. So we're going to here for n. So this is the step number in zero through two steps. We need to create a. Step uh, step entity, which, uh, I said, which includes a time, a an ID, and the bodies. Uh, 
Now immediately we have a problem that this is going to feel quite redundant, really. Um, so we're not going to use the literal sense. So we're not going to use a method. We could, um, in fact, I, I'm inclined to define another constructor for this because it feels clumsy to have to uh, do it all again. Uh, I wonder how we're going to visualize this. Ah, the visualization is kind of cool. So I'll just bring up, because there are much, there are probably quite a few people that weren't here right at the start. Uh, this is where we're going to end up. We're going to be ending up with a, so this is the, uh, this is the question. We are going to create a GIF or GIF <laughs> of our simulated bodies and uh, the, uh, uh, is there a way to hide the ghost-like text? So this is uh, all the type hints. There is, um, if I go to open user settings for JSON, and then ask for settings and then Rust Analyzer. It'll be in here somewhere, uh, but I like I don't know exactly where. So if you don't like the type ins, then get rid of them. <laughs> um, they uh, uh, highlighting maybe there'll be a bunch and so uh yeah you can feel free to play with the rust analyzer um settings okay back to work okay n is in and i need to actually say it's a u64 which uh, in fact it's u32 i think no such type oh oh i called it step And I'll get rid of that. And time is the n as a floating point number. To essentially multiply by time step. And the bodies are first, second, and third. Now we have a slight problem. Like we haven't done any, and that is Rust is going to complain really hard, really fast that we have broken the borrow checker rules. Um, I'm so we get some angry use of move, move value first, and if we look inside this, it says it does not implement the copy trait. Da 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 da. Uh, now there is a divergence between what I'm going to do and what the original code does. The original code, imp so I'm going to uh, derives, and I could say debug because it's kind of useful, which enables it to be printed to the screen, implements clone, and I am also going to implement copy. Arguably, you don't need implementing copy is a bit deceptive because if you don't have a good intuition for how the borrow checker works it can kind of re lead you slightly astray because whenever there's a conflict with the borrow checker rust just spawns a new copy uh, so it can actually be quite handy to do this explicitly the distinction between the clone method and the copy method is that clone is explicit you um, need to call clone Although in the case of uh, but in the case of the original code, which is on the right, um, the bodies are not don't implement copy, uh, and the but and so instead they're duplicated whenever they're needed um, in my case i know that we're just dealing with integers and so forth and so i think that it might be useful to just implement copy and get the thing uh to do it itself now this yeah again it's slightly deceptive so the the warning by the way so you you may 
you may wonder why it is that there was a borrow there's an issue with the borrow checker when we only do it once essentially the reason why the borrow checker is complaining is because it thinks of each iteration as a new uh invocation of um is a, is a sort of a new access and what we're trying to do is put each of our bodies into a new array in each timestamp and that kind of distributes ownership or it purports to distribute ownership across the um across all time steps which doesn't comply with rust's you rule your ownership exists in one place okay so now we're learning a little bit about ownership uh, a little bit about one of, a couple of the things to do with um uh what are we doing we now need to implement some physics <laughs> so i've learned a little bit about ownership a little bit about copying and uh, now I get the delight of just copying, pasting all of the physics and uh, and then making some slight refactors to hopefully make it a little bit simpler. Now, we're going to loop over all of the bodies twice and there's a possibility of parameter so this three is all of the bodies if we had if we wanted to do it differently we could structure it such as that the number here is a constant and um ah we have a new parameter which is the uh, new step let me just double check what new step is and i think this might be the reason why uh, here's a new step. Okay. So I'll just keep the... <laughs> yes, this is the rest of the L. I'll just copy and paste the really complex physics. <laughs> We're going to go through it, I promise. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry about this. Uh, I'm going... I'm trying not to cheat. <laughs> okay, so... Ah, okay. So there are a few things that need to change because I've updated uh, the types. Um, okay, so for everybody, we're going to loop over twice. If you know anything about computer science, you know that this is actually quite computationally awful. However, in body problems, that is uh, trying to understand the way that gravitational forces interact across every body in the whole simulation is famously very difficult to uh, make computationally efficient because we need because gravity has this interesting property that it exists across the entire universe kind of crazy to think about and every particle interacts with every other particle and so we need to do that here uh, now this code dx and dy uh, d is a uh, is a bit of a hint that we're talking about delta and delta is the greek the greek triangle delta uh typically represents change so what we are trying to do is for and so new step bodies um the, the uh we we're trying to find the change between uh the previous position and the current position okay oh gosh for x now we need to update this because uh, i've got uh, so there's two things that i could do i can either update the code to be more like the previous code which is that i could have a structure position which could have an x field and a y field and now my positions here uh i could just kind of slot this in here uh and then the same with velocity alternatively i can update the ma mathematical code to teach rust how to 
access the x and the y position and i could do that directly through uh and i'll just I'll, I'll teach you that because it might be simple although i'm a bit worried that it's going to actually end up being more complicated because it's going to be less readable so this is arguably in fact it's very easy to argue that i'm making a mistake here so what we're trying to do is calculate the difference in the uh, x and the y positions and now we can now we can use trigonometry to find out how far away they are so r is the radius and uh, um, <laughs> is is the distance so we have this is a Pythagor pythagorean formula so multiply x and y and take their square, square root and now we have the hypotenuse um, and now we need the gravitational force between each of them and uh, in some sense actually we don't need to ask for i'm going to change this code sorry <laughs> I hate doing this on so i'm gonna sort a is uh is a i'm gonna take a mutable reference into step so now this one is going to be body a and b i hate myself for doing this because i don't know if changing my code is going to create some future problem that i'm going to need to fix in uh in desperation live um however so now we have the change in the difference in the position. We have the position between the x and y. Uh, we take x x squared plus y squared uh, in the square root. We have the hypotenuse. This thing here is the gravitational constant. And uh, so if you are Newton, you have a um, So this is the force known as uh, in the, the notation has changed and um until uh newton wasn't quite sure what on earth this was um until we had einstein or einstein we didn't really know um how even to calculate it it looks like you can get rid of the square root so it probably we probably can accept and i uh, i actually don't know enough trigonometry or geometry to know but i think that the square the the product or if we it's x squared plus y squared the square root of the this actually enables us to deal with negative numbers consistently uh that's my understanding however I'm just going to leave the formula as is because if I touch the formula, things start breaking very badly. Um, so this is a gravitational constant. Um, and it feels very all, kind of annoying that there's like this, this arbitrary constant in the universe and that has pissed physicists off for a long time. So uh, now we, this is A, the mass of A, and we've defined this, we've hard coded both of these as one. So potentially we could shrink a time one times one divided by r divided by r you know we could actually simplify this expression in quite a great deal uh we need to do a little bit of more trigonometry so we calculate the uh we now have the force of gravity at the distance and now we have the uh, the angle so now we can actually update velocity because if we have the gravitational forces applied to each of the um uh so this is i the only problem is i need to make sure that i and j correspond so i this is actually b 
and we don't have vx that's actually zero There will almost certainly be a bug because I've introduced some simplification in the code. So this is the the thing that I'm slightly wary of. Um, ah, cannot mutate immutable variables. Well, that's okay. We can adjust that. And now, ah, the other problem. Okay, that's actually not the issue. We don't want to just, we don't want to mutate what we're locating. What we need is that uh, the step itself needs to be um, mutable. And now, the compiler warnings change, I think. Cannot borrow more than one. Oh, no. Yeah, I was wondering if this was going to be a problem, but the compiler was telling me it was fine. And so now, I have a decision to make. So what we've asked for is something that's kind of illegal. We've asked for two mutable references into uh, into new step. Now we know as programmers that we are dealing with different parts of this array independently. When we promise to Rust that we are not going to touch it, so we needed we we've got a decision to make. We can uh make a copy and then essentially write things back and i think that's actually what i want to do because we've implemented copy so the way to do this so actually so matthew's just um, um at a suggestion uh here which is yeah exactly what i think there are other ways to do this uh we could create like a some indirection with shared pointers and like mutable and like sorry shared ownership and so forth but i don't really don't want to uh it makes the code more complicated it introduces the possibility of runtime panics and um copies are cheap <laughs> <laughs> and the so now we need to so what we're going to do is create a new body now uh, this is just a and b are just temporaries And now we need to act on f of x, the force of x, and the force of y. So b velocity is... Ah, okay, so we're calculating b every time. And then I'll just check if we have more updates. I think that we're finished. Because I did copy and paste the thing. And now... We actually don't need this uh, to be mutable because we, in fact, this could actually be a reference. But bodies I must be B. So uh, maybe this is not obvious what's happening, but I'm creating a brand new copy inside the loop at every stage. I'm updating that loop and then I'm reassigning into the original variable. So essentially for during the loop at every step, we're creating a fourth body essentially. Uh, now we are only we're also going to take a reference. Arguably, this is not what we need to do. Uh, I could just do it here with another copy, um, but referring back to the same data and value is, is all fine. Okay, so now we have uh, now we've solved the borrow checker issues by introducing a uh, extra memory. We're spending memory in order to. Uh, kind of speed things up. Now, we've 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 assigned velocities to all of the so velocities in uh, on a two-dimensional hypothetical plane, and now we actually need to move our planets 
in space. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> and if you're just joining here, joining us, I um I'll just uh just just a very small pump. Please do uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Is probably the best um, way to to find me. Um, I'm just going to add a very annoying banner for a few seconds. There we go. There's YouTube Tim Clicks, and uh, the code itself is available uh, in my GitHub account. And uh, you're very welcome to to play along. So I'll just um, now stop the annoying banners, but um, I'm very keen to share with as many people as I can um, this really imp really important programming language, Rust. Uh, and I am hopeful that you're gonna, gonna, you are going to come along in the journey with me. So now we've got some decisions to make. We need to update. So this is the same problem with a lot of syntactic noise that we had earlier. Uh, we've got new step bodies, like a lot of duplicated effort. Uh, all we're doing is updating our, our, we're updating the position of X and Y depending on the velocity of X and Y. And then we multiply by the time step, right? Because this is the, so, yeah, we could do we could use proper calculus to do this. Um, I say proper. This is perfectly fine. We're solving this problem via simulation. We're not we're not solving we're not solving the problem analytically. Um, for people that know calculus, they'll know what those words mean. <laughs> for people that do not, just ignore the last twenty seconds. And um, there's another way to do this. Or it, note that we are iterating and then updating in place. So what about if we did this uh, for body in new step bodies? And I'm going to iter mute through because I don't want to copy them across. And so now we have a mutable reference into the variable. So uh so body position zero we add velocity zero and then we multiply by time step and we do this so that's the first line we do this for the x and the y coordinate uh unfortunately my naming here is worse than the original in the original code velocity is defined as an actual struct so with a, with a vx um, velocity in the x direction and velocity in the y direction of meters um, per second and uh, i'm just creating a tuple in my code now you are very welcome to do the right thing here and make this much harder to make a mistake about. The other thing to do is to define an update. So we don't actually need to uh, do this outside of the definition. Like we're in the main function here. We could run the stim simulation as a method on, for example, body uh and that way we could never go wrong okay okay now we haven't talked about visualization at all yet uh but we have a working simulation so i'm going to do something that's very ugly and very young uh which is that i am going to um this is actually going to be awful in terms of we're only going to track one of the bodies and so or uh, it's like if n is the number of simulation is like uh divided by 10 1000 equals for every 10000 steps i'll start by printing the positions of um, our three bodies. 
and I'm going to, so this is first and position zero. And the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is I want to show you how to simplify the precision inside the uh, inside the formatting string. So we actually, oh, why is that angry? Oh, it's angry because I've provided two arguments, but actually I've only specified one. Normally, so this is a little bit happier with me now. Uh, so what we want to see over the course of our simulation is the positions of X and Y changing. Uh, one of the things that I haven't done is actually update steps. We don't need it yet. Although maybe... Hmm... maybe we'll find ourselves in a problem so let's let's just see because we have a kind of a weird different like a weird issue and that is at the moment we are dealing with with local variables inside main but actually we should probably be like popping off the last step and updating that so you see here we kind of got this weird indirection now if we so this this bodies should probably be uh, vec step like the, the we should initialize steps with the initial positions and then uh, update. Well, let's let's see if we let's see if we're wrong. So we're inside the the code. Uh, original. Uh, so I can actually get. Um, Uh, test one. I'll call this. I have this something where I, like I denote my work in progress commits as whip, um, and I'm going to push this uh, to the repository now. And so, if you go to uh, Tim Click's tutorials, you'll see the code that I'm using right now. Um, and what we want is to go into the orbits directory and cargo run ah this is on so the exactly the problem <laughs> we're not moving <laughs> we haven't updated the position that we're actually dealing with so we're kind of mathematically calculating exactly the same thing every single time so i'm glad that we checked otherwise we would have had a very very boring um uh simulation Okay, uh, where do I go now? I need to go somewhere next. Color is... Aha, this is it. So we did it kind of what I expected that we should do. We should just basically copy the bodies Ah, uh, interesting. Hmm. Okay, so what the original code does is update. And this would be first, second, and third from the. Why oh, you cannot mutate? Uh, so, gosh, go away. Uh, essentially uh, working in here. We still haven't actually used any of the, the memory that we reserved for steps. Now let's see if this changes our code. We don't actually need to use the clone because as it, the warning says, we implement copy. So as soon as there is the need to duplicate the value, it will just update. 
so what we want to see now is the position of our x, uh, sorry, our planets actually changing. And we still don't. I wonder if I'm going to get into a big of a problem where people are going to start screaming at me. <laughs> Tim, why do you not comment your code? That's funny because last time, last time I gave a stream, I got to think, Tim, why do you add so many comments to your code? And so I thought I would just pull back on the, on the, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I need to fix the bug. Uh, so the question of why don't I add comments is primarily because it introduces typos. So at the moment I'm talking to you explaining the code. I, if I need to think of a sentence and write it down and also explain code at the same time, it becomes very, very complicated. My head is, uh, so I try to add uh, comments where I can. Um, however, the uh i'm just going to add some more precision because perhaps i am wrong okay i will endeavor so to to add some code to go comment so report current state so this is looking very strange i want I think oh. I think I you are printing before updating the bodies. Ah, interesting. But shouldn't this update anyway during the simulation? Hmm. <clears throat> I will check. So this looks quite awful. I apologize that the word wrapping is not working. Third position, zero second. So we should see these change. Oh gosh, over time. And I'm just going to run the formatter. Um, I can do this within the, within the editor. Um, alternatively, I can run uh, cargo format, which does the, uh, the same thing, except the editor gets a bit confused and says, "Oh, your oh, you know your file on disk is different than what I remember." So sometimes it's easier to go with the editor. So what we want to see is these uh, positions change. It's going to be harder to see though because. Um, I'm going to change uh, this to print. So there's only, uh, so so the, the positions don't change. Now this is frustrating because, um, so I'm going to try one other thing, which is, um, the, so the, uh, I've, so I'm missing a line. Essentially, what's happening is that I am not. Um, I'm not updating something. Maybe it's this change that I made. But uh, we can find out that out very quickly if new if there's currently a compiler warning. Uh, and there isn't yet, but ah, okay. So we must require a. Oh, actually, that's slightly different. But Rust Analyzer at the moment is getting a little bit confused. Um... Maybe if I increase, the, this is going to sound stupid, but. Oh, 
Uh, actually, not stupid. Aha. Okay, so what I did there was update the time step. So the problem was that my simulation and my precision made it very difficult for... So I see here that I wanted four places of significant... Uh, I wanted four levels of precision. <laughs> I can't actually remember. Four significant figures. Now, that wasn't actually detectable on very small timestamps. The bodies themselves didn't adjust very much. Uh, so now if I increase the time step even further, in fact, I'm increasing it by five, the positions radically change and they do. Okay, this makes our animation slower, but we now need to animate the code because this is not the, the nicest output. What we want is kind of, uh, you know, a lovely, we want a lovely picture about, um, so what we're going to get to is, uh, let's um, open up the tutorial. Unracking unsaved, build your own maker. Three bodies, there we are. Original. You know, we have, this is kind of what we want to, uh, generate eventually now we would actually like to retain a little bit of the previous thing and maybe have motion blur and so forth but i will try to create that but i can't actually promise that i can do it so um i have some suggestions but i i don't know you notice here that the time steps are large so this is um i think on one million time steps that we're sim but in my case i'm only simulating ten thousand. I think as the number a oh, hundred thousand steps okay cool uh, it's really wonderful to see everybody and thank you so much for participating for those of you who are still watching and you have been from the beginning congratulations to you <laughs> uh and uh it's it's actually it's a, it's very very nice to see you uh we're now going we've now got an accurate simulation so i'm just going to update the code uh, um in the repository, cargo add dot and oh gosh, not cargo, git add dot and then cargo push oh, commit working, what is it? Working simulation. Oh, I did it again. get push no comments at the moment it's an interesting state uh i am curious about whether or not um is anybody watching <laughs> so we now want to move from purely printing things out and uh the we want to create a nice picture okay There are two more parameters in our simulation, which is the frames per second and the length, which is the number of seconds in the total, yeah, the number of seconds in our animated GIF file. Wow. <laughs> It must be very, very late. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, again, if you're still watching, I, I applaud you. Um, okay, let's update our little animation. Uh, so we want two. And ooh, that's not right. Uh, animation length. I'm going to change something so that we have... Uh, I'm going to say that we have... Um, const uh, f64... And I'm going to say that it's 60 seconds and our animation frames per second will also be 60. You know, if we wanted to, we could be ultra cool and uh, have 120 FPS. <laughs> I think that's what the cool kids use these days. Um, but this may actually be the wrong data type. Let me double check on U32. 
U32. Okay, right. So actually, these need to be um, untimed integers because, or they need to be integers. Uh, they could be. Uh, it doesn't matter that we've used signed integers here rather than unsigned. Uh, except for the fact that this is going to sound very silly. I'm on an Intel machine and Intel likes signed integers rather than unsigned integers. So I'm saving a few nanoseconds. Um, there's a lot of bookkeeping uh, to happen. First... I need to configure a so the the library that I'm going to use is called plotters. And plotters is a Rust library. Uh, cargo add plotters. There we go. And there are lots of interesting features that it provides, including the ability to produce yeah, we can produce SVG files, um, and it the thing that we care about is like we can actually produce GIF files, which is kind of cool. We can produce animations inside with a single library, which is kind of neat. And the <laughs> uh, actually that would be kind of fun. Essentially, have a cut plugin that just essentially like. <laughs> goes it would save embarrassment for future typos so the suggestion here is that whenever i run cargo commit or cargo push or whatever or cargo add, cargo add is a bit different um, uh, it, essentially cargo will say i think you meant a git command and will then um work uh, that's kind of funny oh wow Started watching at 8 3 a.m. Goodness me. It must be quite late. <laughs> so it's now 4 a.m. You should probably go to bed. The recording will be there, as I'm, honestly, I promise it will be there. Uh, you might need to go to work or go to school tomorrow. <laughs> oh, God. I've suddenly. Uh, okay. So let's uh, let's build our. So the, the question is. Like, well, okay, I've got a library. How does it work? And the thing to find out if we are, if the, the place to look, if we wanted to discover how a crate works, I'm just, I'm typing off, off screen, is to bring up a web browser and go to crates.io and then talk about, oh, so this has um, been misconfigured. It looks awful, but the readme file <laughs> It's actually been, uh, it's not rendering correctly. Um, so we go to documentation. Oh, let's actually go to the homepage and take a quick look. Uh, it doesn't look particularly special currently. Uh, and um, it is sort of matplotlib for Rust, um, but with less, um, slightly less maturity, I'd say. Uh, but it has a relatively friendly API and it works. And so here is a here is you know there's a, like a good gallery of um, example plots that we are uh, looking at. And what we want to do is essentially treat our three little planets as uh, particles on like uh, we're going to use scatter plot functionality. Uh, because we know that they exist only on a two-dimensional plane. Uh, and we're going to build repeated scatter plots again and again and again. Okay. So this, in some sense, is the easiest um, uh, part of the uh, part of the tutorial. In some sense, though, it's also the most... Um, how do I say this? It's kind of the most arbitrary. Mm, I don't even know if this is the right word, but like there is a lot of, uh, I hate, I'm sorry. I should finish sentences. It's also the most difficult part because you have a lot of personal, your, your personal decisions about what looks nice and so forth. 
Um, and I dislike a lot. <laughs> this is going to sound obvious. I actually dislike some of the decisions that have been made by the original author, not because the person is bad or anything, but just because I have different preferences. And so software people making a uh, software people talking about differences in opinions is like a recipe for like a lot of anger. And so be very mindful of, uh, of this. And the, I also implement, I wondered about implementing this in like say Bevy, uh, yeah, you have a, and I, I wondered as well about, uh, creating a, a web app like with Liptos and decided to just go with the easy thing of just rendering, uh, something off, um, offline because it means that it can pretty much work anywhere and so uh here is so here's the here's the method we have some slice some number of steps and uh we could produce um uh we don't need to tell yeah you know, we're generating an animation here's the name that we're creating and it as parameters takes uh, a, an area and we're going to, let's actually create it slightly bigger than 250 by 250. Um, oh no, we'll start, we'll start there. And here is the interesting thing for, we start with a chart because we're just creating a 2D to plane and let's go and find the, uh, and we provide essentially something to draw onto. So conceptually the chart is being drawn or plotted onto a surface the surface is provided by this bitmap back in and uh which provides an into drawing area met area method which can be uh, a space for charts to draw on now uh we're creating a 2d cartesian plane uh, so the origin is sort of where the bodies start and then they kind of swirl around and um, the question one of the things that I had was so here we go we are filling with white so we're just going to slap white across the whole thing and then in here is for each of the bodies we're going to say we have a blue a red or a black uh, sorry blue green or red one I would recommend not using fully saturated colors if you're creating your own visualizations because they look very harsh, looks very computer. Um, but uh, a series is the, it's sort of a mathematical statistical term for a row of data. Uh, so this is a, um, the, and the series in the sense is like data to be plotted on a 2d graph so here is our embodies position x and y uh and we could actually say that um is step bodies in and in fact we we, we only need read access so we'll take a reference and uh here is uh x and y now the so the circle's diameter uh so we have an x coordinate and a y coordinate for the circle itself and filled is probably what we want sans serif now i have a pretty cool we could use a different font uh a really nice one is um is actually inter on the uh if you're creating graphics for the screen i wonder and now we actually need to initialize our steps uh vector because animation 
animate steps we then take a uh, reference of our steps <laughs> use comments i look i <laughs> i feel like um maybe <laughs> i'll get murdered <laughs> somehow oh, no not quite um it's not it's not that bad uh, the other thing I need to do is like I've I've introduced a bunch of so the compiler is a bit angry at me. I've got these um, name things: red, blue, green, black. Uh, they come from named colors provided by the plotters library. So uh, plotters uh, preload the convention or in the Rust community for having a set of imports that you expect your users to use is to create an internal module called preload and then export anything that is required by default uh, this is not a required thing to do uh, but it uh, often makes things simpler i've got another problem i've got a u uh, okay so this goes into why i needed unsigned now and this one animation length is never used okay so let me just check uh maybe uh oh i see the I don't actually need it. We just have the the animation length is just proportional to the number of steps in the simulation, which kind of makes sense. If you want to do the mathematics to be able to, to normalize, um, it's not complicated, but it's also an, it's <laughs> going to get it wrong. I think I just need to divide the number of frames by the length in some way. And uh, I think this is animation. Maybe this is... frame delay huh I think I just need to divide the frame I'm not sure okay yeah so this is an interesting question mark as a as a as, a, as someone designing a library do you provide them do you provide someone with all of the tools or alternatively what would be really nice is that we are creating a two-dimensional plot can we just provide a data set to plot that would be neat. that would be really nice um, and yeah it's a complicated balance on terms of api design matplotlib provides three interfaces essentially it provides the matlab interface and object-oriented interface as well uh, and then matplotlib is integrated into, say, pandas and with its own plot functionality. And so essentially, or is like wrapped by other things like Seaborn. So I'm talking about a plotting library in Python. And uh, I, yeah, the Rust community is still learning how to do scientific visualization. Okay, cargo run. And this time I'm actually going to add the release flag. because I'm probably going to need much more uh, computational power. By the way, we are coming up to the end of the stream, so I'm going to give you a link, and I would like it, if you have not already done so, to, uh, to follow the link. In fact, there's going to be two. Uh, one of them is to my YouTube channel. I really want to see you there. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go to all destinations, um, and the reason why I think it's important to see to see you there is that my YouTube channel is kind of like the center of my social media Rust teaching universe, and there are more streams coming online every time I can do one, and more tutorials, and so I try to stream on a Sunday evening or Sunday afternoon for those people based in the States and Europe or Africa. 
and or, you know, I suppose even the Middle East. However, um, the well, let me just check because I'm very close. Three body dragon. Oh, I have black square. I've been able to render a black square, everybody. Perfect. <laughs> okay, we've still got some work to do. Oh, no. What? Oh, I thought I thought we were all done. I need to figure this out. I was going to say, we're about to wrap up. But you know what? We are not. Um, <gasps> I know what I haven't done. Can anyone guess? <laughs> we actually need to add the new step to our code which i was like why i don't know if anyone else noticed that it was extremely fast to, to generate an animation i was like wow that was instantaneous um oh anyway i was rabbiting on about my youtube channel it's the center of what i like to um uh do so ah uh, see this is taking much longer uh it's quite computationally intensive to to do all of the rendering this is also quite a poor video format uh i'm essentially creating uncompressed bitmaps and for every frame and so if you're creating something like this for quote production you'll want to use a genuine video codec uh because most the pixels are duplicated across multiple frames the compression ratio should be very high uh, but in this case i am generating an image every single frame it's like ten thousand of them uh so that's just going to take a long time in the sense um but here's an interesting question that i think is probably worthwhile to chat uh, to discuss like if i'm a library author what should I include in my prelude? And um, I, I'm i very curious about whether or not other people have answers to this because I am going to try and say something which is a slightly provocative. You want to create, you want your prelude to be as small as possible because ah, uh, because you really want people to learn about how your API works. You want to provide the minimum number of traits that you can provide that provide, which makes functionality. So this is going to sound silly, but you want just enough, but no more, <laughs> I think is the, is the best I can get to a general answer because sometimes we as library authors expose types and traits if you have users that forget to import the traits the types don't work correctly and so your users will have issues like oh this method doesn't exist and a prelude is a good way to improve the first 10 minutes or 10 days with a library However, it's okay for your users to outgrow the preload. It's just a set of defaults. It should not be the entire library itself. Um, let's go check on the compilation. We're still generating an animation. I'm going to hit Control C, and we'll see if um, the so if, you know 100. Uh, see if we got something more. Oh, it's I've got a spinner, which is not the black box. Aha! <laughs> i've got dots yay they're moving very 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 slowly <laughs> so and you're like what on earth is going on here one of the things is so gravity is going to take some time to kind of sp speed up because the the, the velocities of all of our planets was initially zero. We could have said that actually they had some momentum towards the origin. Uh, and also our time slice method is very, very slow. So 
unfortunately for us, we got... <laughs> okay, I, 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 I should... Let's try and update um, some of this. So, you, by the way, this is kind of the end of the tutorial. Uh, uh, I'm going to update, change this uh, quite radically so that hopefully we can... Uh, and I'm going to reduce the number of steps down to 10,000, I think. Uh, I might even go with 50. Um, because, and this will look quite jumpy now. Our simulation is now going to be radically different from anything that's... Um, and analytically correct because we are not doing proper calculus um and uh the other thing is that we should see the planets radically veer off the space so uh you'll notice here on the 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 our first planet um, we're at 50, 553, which is well off this, the, the area that we have actually decided to chart or to plot. Oh, sorry, I'm, I should have uh, reduced this. So I'm just going to hit Control C again. And uh, let's check our orbits, body, body. Spin, 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 spin. Hmm. Nothing's changing. This indicates to me that I am... Oh, no, 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 no. <gasps> Gravity is speeding up. Hooray! <laughs> and then did you, did you see it? What happened there was that the forces were so radical. Like, we uh, had a singularity towards infinity. And then... Um, let's, let's... Like, that was actually... That's an interesting thing to observe. Um, if you care about numeric like actually simulation of like if you're actually doing computational astrophysics this is a problem that you need to think about so the issue is watch the blue and the green dot they're kind of attracted to each other and then because we have such large time steps they will eventually explode uh all the way out to uh kind of close to infinity and the problem the reason why this happens is because our steps are so jumpy. Uh, so, hey, Andrew, it's really nice to see you. It's okay that you have just joined us. Uh, I do not know of very, I, a lot about um, the state of physics simulation in Rust. By the way, just uh, while we're talking, you may be wondering why red, the red planet is still moving. And that's because our two others, the blue and the green planet, actually got flown away to infinity, but they were actually getting sucked back to the origin over time. Uh, and so red, so gravity is still acting. Um, and uh, however, so I'll just answer Tim's question. Sorry, Andrew's question. There is actually a scientific computing in Rust um, effort. Um, uh, let me... And I, what I mean is that they're actually hosting an online conference, um, Rust Scientific Computing. Uh, let me bring it up. Yeah, it's scientificcomputing.rs. I mean, that's kind of useful. Uh, here's the website. So... Uh, this is an online conference. You're very welcome to just basically subscribe to it on YouTube or you can go and submit a talk. Uh, and the um, there will be a good indication of uh, libraries. I think that most of the library support in Rust at the moment is primarily focused, I would say, on the game side. So real-time... So relatively computationally simple, but also inaccurate uh, and potentially subject to errors relating to precision uh, once we start to head towards the origin, uh, sorry, essentially the boundaries of what floating point can represent. Um, but yeah, this isn't a domain that I have a great deal of expertise in. Uh, even though I have quite a, a, a sort of a scientific interest, I have like, I, I'm quite curious. If you please report back. Um, are there any, 
So, yeah, we just want SciPy in Rust. Isn't it funny? It's like, oh, I'd love that really wonderful library that Python has, just in Rust, um, which is quite close to what we're getting. This is a, we're in a, I, we're essentially off stream now, by the way. So if you feel like I'm uh, talking about things that have nothing to do with three bodies, it's because I'm essentially trying to say question time has started and, uh, Polars is this really interesting examination of what could happen for Python and data science over time. Uh, Polars is this data frames library that's extremely fast and is installable through Python and pip. And it's actually built in Rust uh, and actually can be used in node as well because rust is a central fast core and can be uh, used from within multiple places and uh, by multiple places from within multiple programming languages and i think that more and more of the engine of science is going to come from rust uh, over time uh, and that will include physics libraries uh, however numerical integration and you're competing essentially a rust community would be competing against close to 70 years of fortran um and that's that's quite a lot of heritage to be competitive against before i wrap up are there any further questions I'll just unhide myself very, very quickly and say um, it's actually been a really wonderful stream. I've enjoyed it a lot. Um, I hope that your journey with Rust is highly successful and please do reach out if I can be of any assistance, either personally or even professionally. I run a consultancy where I teach Rust uh, and I'm more than happy to come and help your team uh, or company with that process as well. So it, uh, with that, I'm going to say good night and good day to everybody. I hope that you have had a wonderful time uh, playing with Rust and uh, I'll see you online. Take care. My name is Tim Clicks and I'm on the planet to build a better planet.